This screencast is to demonstrate the horizontal gene transfer module. of IMGACT. So down here, uh, just a quick review, basic information has been completed, sequence-based similarity data has been completed, cellular localization data is complete, alternative open reading frame data is complete, structure-based evidence is complete, we're skipping, enzymatic function and duplication and degradation, we're going to complete the horizontal gene transfer module, we're going to skip the mRNA or the RNA module and we will uh, go on to a proposed annotation module, which will be the last part of, of your module of based assignments. So as a reminder, you understand where you are uh, in, in this uh, assignment. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, into my, I can go home, back to my course, see my assignment, and I'm here opening this in lab notebook in a new link, and I'm going to need my gene object identifier page open there. So here I will quickly go down to my horizontal gene transfer module and say okay what is it that I'm really doing? Well basically we're comparing the protein or the primary amino acid sequence of this particular gene to the phylogeny and gene context and GC content of the organism. So we're, we're backwards. The GC content is the percentage of Gs and Cs in the genome. Uh, if this particular gene at the DNA level has a warped or altered GC content that could indicate that this gene came in um, as an invading gene horizontally, it was not inherited per se, but it was a piece of DNA that invaded this organism. The same thing can be determined from the contents context of the gene, and a more complicated analysis comes in phylogeny. We'll start with phylogeny because it's going to take some time. In order to generate a phylogenetic tree, I'm going to generate. I'm going to need my uh, my group of sequences from my sequence-based similarity module right here, my tea coffee sequences. I'm going to need these. And of course, so we're going to go back here and get these sequences, drag them down. I always go too quickly and have problems. I'm going to go slowly here so that I don't... Um, there we go. It's just about the right pace. I'm collecting these sequences. Ah! Oh, now let's remind ourselves, I made a mistake. Let's remind ourselves, these sequences were generated as blast hits, basic local alignment search tool. These sequences were, were the result of taking the primary amino acid sequences, sequence and comparing it to a vast database of other primary amino acid sequences. These were not all the top hits I gathered of wide variety of hits, not just the closest ones. I did this because we're going to use this to make a multiple sequence alignment. And a very common issue is what is the difference between a multiple sequence alignment and the BLAST protocol. Okay, oh, got it, got it, got it. Notice the second one is my um, uh, query sequence. So down here at horizontal gene transfer, I'm now going to open the phylogeny tree and it's going to take a while. This is uh, making a, uh, basically a tree of life of this particular organism using the one-click method for the be uh, for us beginners. Uh, this page is down as is normal. We're having glitchy, glitchy, glitchy. So we're going to click here and see if we can do it on a different page and we can do our one-click analysis by pasting those sequences here. Once again, these sequences are going to be compared by an alignment, not tea coffee, but by uh, an algorithm called muscle. It's a multiple sequence alignment. It's going to put them together and create a phylogenetic tree. This is going to take some time. High powered computing. To put this into context, uh, this kind of analysis 10 years ago might have taken uh, a week. 
let's go back and look into the gene context. And to, to, in order to get to the gene context, it says ortholog neighborhood region. I'm going to open my gene details page, and I'm going to scroll down to this guy right here. And I'm just going to go right here, show neighborhood regions with this gene's bidirectional best hits. So we're going to open that in a new tab. So this particular one, show neighborhood regions with this gene's bidirectional best hits directly related to this gene context. While this thing is pulling itself up, let's go to the GC heat map. So again, back to the gene details page, and I'm going to look at the chromosome viewer colored by GC content. So now I have three tabs that are open that are directly related to the three fields in the horizontal gene transfer module. So I'm really analyzing the context of this gene within its genome in comparison to other genomes and other organisms. This is a true global genome-wide comparison. So we just check and see how my processes are going. I've got the, ooh, we're, we're, we've got a nice animation generating that phy, phylogenetic tree. I've got the GC heat map of this particular gene over here, and I've got the, the gene neighborhood of this particular gene. So I have all the information, almost, that I need you can, the, to, to work through this module. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, the tree rendering is done. Okie dokie, smoky. Here we go. Now, how do we interpret all of this kind of things? So what I need to do is I need to put the phylogenetic tree image in there. I need to put the gene neighborhood images in here. And I need to examine the GC content. I'm going to work from the bottom up. We're going to do the easiest and get to the most complicated first. So what is the characteristic GC percentage of the genome in this organism, in Thiomicrospira crunogena? Uh, right here. The finished genome uh, is 0.43 percent. I'm 0.43 or 43 percent. So I'll go here, and I can put in here 0 0.43, and then the G C percent <coughs> of the gene. Excuse me. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna grab that from this link. The GC content of this gene is 0 0.47. So, 0 0.47. Oop, come on. 0 0.47. So, I've completed that. I'm going to save that because I lose everything. Go back over here, uh, and you can see this is super duper cool. And what this is, it represents the predicted open reading frames of protein coding genes in this organism's genome in both reading frames. In this particular case, you, the coloring is, in, is indicative of the GC content. As you can see I have a 47% GC content of this gene. It's got the red bar, so I know what I'm looking at. And the genes next to it are the same. This is a, a giveaway to the fact that this, this gene is, is is very similar in GC content to the, to the genes around it, with the exception of this one, which is a little bit less, but pretty good. Okay, and we're asked to grab this image and... Uh, no, we're not asked to grab that image, sorry, one more. We're uh, this image over here. Now we're, um, we're going to take... we're going to take this image and squeeze it right in here. I only got one of them. All right, that's okay. Uh, when we look here, uh, I want you to point out. Note: this is the gene of interest. This is our query gene, and we're we're, we're viewing the gene neighborhood of similar organisms. So let's look at the genus and species. You have Thiomicrospira crunogena, th and Thiomicrospira, Thiomicrospira halobacillus neopolitanus, and these are similarly related organisms. 
how are the genes organized? The gene in red, does it, it look at that. It has a gene, I don't know, red, brown, light brown, green, red, brown, light brown, pink, uh, pink, blue, red, brown, light brown, blue, red, brown, light brown, blue, red, brown, light brown, light blue, red, brown, light brown, light blue. So we're seeing that this particular gene is organized in the same manner in these six organisms that are closely related and that um, there is a similarity there. So what, what do we do with that piece of information? Um, I'm going to write type that down. This gene is organized in a similar manner in related organisms. And finally, we're going to go grab this phylogenetic tree. This is often the most confusing one. So I'm going to select this image. Alright, let's see why I can't... Before I completely lose it here, let me just examine the tree. Let me find my... This is my gene of interest right here. And its relationship, phylogenetic relationship based upon this particular gene, places it with its closely related species. And far away from some of the outliers, the least, the, the low hits. You're saying to yourself, how on earth would I ever know this without knowing lots and lots and lots of, of phylogeny. And I'm going to say that we're not asking you to know lots and lots and lots of phylogeny. What we're asking you to recognize is 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 the sequences that you, that you pull out just find it and see that it is closely related to its related species and I'll talk about that a little bit so before um, I finish I said this gene is placed in the tree appropriately and we will save this and call this done in terms of that particular assignment, we can go back to the to the lab report, and I've been a little uh, weak with that, so I'm going to say, look, what do we have here? Horizontal? Is there evidence of horizontal gene transfer? No. Is this gene a member of a parent operon? Yes. What's the GPC percent of the organism? Forty-three. What's the GC percent for the gene? Forty-seven. We're going to save that and say, that's it.